Okay, now that we've uh, had a look at the typical corrugated profile and what we need to do to combat capillary action, let's have a look at the other profiles, the common profiles that are more suitable for the flatter roofs from 5 degrees and below. My favourite would be the clip lock profile. And we'll have a look at how the manufacturers have done the lab to try to eliminate the problem with capillary action. All right, so we'll have a closer look at the lap of the speed deck here. And you'll note that there is a bit of a flare right there on this edge. And this is, so when you, in a situation like that, this little flare in there actually prevents water from climbing up because this is the first point of the anti-capillary action. If you have a look closer, you'll notice that the, the angle, this is the underlap, the angle there is actually less sharp than the angle on the overlap right there. So when it's clipped in, you've created a tiny little air gap right there. So this is the main resistance point for capillary action because if water climbs up and it comes up to there, this little air gap will stop the water from further climbing up this edge and then going over and into the roof. As you can see, the top deck profile or clip lock profile is quite smart uh, in how they have designed it to create deliberately the voids to stop capillary action from happening. So the, this profile is pretty foolproof. Uh, it's one of our favorites for the uh, low pitch roofs. The only problem is where you have to go and cut a hole on the roof to install a penetration like a vent or skylight or something and if that hole is cut at the lap the lap around the flashing is not treated properly then you end up not being able to seal the critical underlap and when you over when you and when you only seal the overlap water gets between the laps and then it then it percolates through behind the silicon sealant and then it goes through the hole and into the roof. So with the clip lock profile, that's your only problem. Now we'll look at the trim deck profile. The trim deck profile, they've also gone and rolled the underlap to be slightly different from the overlap. Now if you have a look at this picture, you'll notice that the underlap has got a wrinkle in it. And that wrinkle is a deliberate distortion of the underlap so that when the overlaps goes over the top, it creates an, an air gap. Where trim deck fails is right at the end of the roof sheet. Because as you lay a roof, you want to line all the sheets up in one line so they look good in the gutter. However, often this is impossible to do so you end up having one sheet slightly longer than the other it just happens that if the overlap is slightly longer than the underlap it's a good thing because the water doesn't trickle backwards onto the water course that is a feature of the underlap if you have it the other way where the underlap actually protrudes past the overlap then you leave a little bit of an edge, much like in the corrugated roof profile. And in here, the water then dribbles onto the water course and then gets sucked back by capillary action up the roof. And more often there is a blanket underneath. So as soon as you've got a blanket, the water runs along the water course, then it dribbles over onto the blanket and then the blanket sucks everything in and then you've got a lot of water slowly 
trickling down into your roof cavity and onto your ceiling. So whilst the designers have done everything they can to prevent capillary action, the installer has to also come to the party. Now with the trim deck roof, a lot of roofers don't actually read the manual because with this particular profile, the manufacturers actually state that the bottom corner has to be snipped, has to be trimmed as preparation before you install the roof sheet. And the purpose of this is if you trim the corner and if the sheet sticks out slightly, the water course isn't. So the water course doesn't actually catch any water that dribbles over the edge of the overlap. And that helps preventing water from getting onto the water course and being sucked up the roof. So this is an essential part of the preparation for a trim deck type roof. You've got to snip the bottom corner, you've got to snip the top corner, and then you're going to turn the sheets up, turn the sheets down before you actually lay them. And if you do that, you've got a much better chance of preventing the dreaded capillary action. So there we are. We've done the low pitch roof profiles, the clip lock and the trim deck. And in the next video, we'll look at flashings and how water can actually travel up flashings if it's not installed correctly.